Hey guys, it's a beautiful morning in uh, southwest Missouri. We're back at the Shaw Hollow Project. We're pouring the light deck roof on the detached garage today. And uh, just kind of wanted to talk to you guys about light deck and all the decking products in general. Um, so light deck comes in full length pieces. These are 32 feet long, um, which the span um, dictates how many caps you put on, which are these guys here. And uh, this particular one took a six and a four on top of the six inch already. So we have a 14 inch deep beam and then four inches of slab on top of that and there's two inches of foam under the beam so the entire roof system is 20 inches thick um, and you can span I think up to around 32 feet with that with two number six bars in the uh, in the channels here so um, down in the bottom I love light deck I think it's a super cool product when we purchased this a few months ago we're just getting back to this project when we purchased this the, the cost of the steel and uh, truss system was just as much as this light deck in the concrete. Um, obviously lumbers come way down, so that's probably not true today, but this still gives you all the benefits of an all concrete structure um, that, you know, it's gonna be by far the best building, you know, you could ever ask for. Uh, it's gonna house a couple of really cool cars, so uh, that, you know, you really want it, it'll take a tornado and those cars will be safe and sound. So like I said, guys, this is the light deck product um, made by Lightform, um, and I like it a lot. The one thing I'll say about it is um, it comes in full length, meaning if you're in a precarious spot or you're shipping it a long way, it can get real expensive to ship it because it might take up most of a semi-trailer. Um, some of the other decks, Am Deck, Quad Deck, I, they're modular. I think they probably looked at you know light deck and said, this is a really cool product. How can we make it a little more uh, usable? I will say this about, um, I'm going to go downstairs here in a minute and show you the false work that is required to support this for, you know, about three weeks after the pour. And it's pretty extensive on light deck. You can't span over, I think, five feet during the pour. We always go under that. I think we're spanning uh, about 310, 39. We just even out the spacing. Anything around four feet is what we go with. Always figure that one extra wall, you know, shore wall under there is uh, belt and suspenders uh, lower the pucker factor a little bit. But, um, the am deck and stuff it comes on pallets and but you have to use a and the, the, there's two by four uh, little like ceiling joists built into the bottom of these light decks and I'll I'll show you a picture of it and I'll show you what it looks like from underneath. Um, with am deck and stuff, you use a two by ten. It can be wood or metal, but obviously that's going to cost a little more. But it may make up for it with the shipping being simpler. And you know, like my Angel Fire project that's coming up, uh, we got to go eight miles up a mountain and trying to do that on you know 40 foot trailers 50 foot trailers Whatever is gonna be a nightmare. So being able to bring it up in pallets is a big deal Also with am deck at least I'm not sure about quad deck You can span up to 15 feet between the false work I don't think I'd push it to 15 but I might go to 10 which would eliminate like over over half of the false work We have to do for light deck. So there's there's options out. There's what I'm saying guys light deck obviously roast ready mix uh, is a dealer for this stuff they can get it shipped to you anywhere. It's all manufactured in one spot, I think, in Iowa. So, um, you know, any dealer can get it for you. Roast tends to keep the price down really well. So if you're looking for something like this, like I said, floors and roofs, I think, you know, uh, ICF Magazine, I'll show you a picture of the one I got last week that was all about ICF roofs. I think it's super, super cool. I think it is the coming thing for a lot of different reasons. But um, anyway, I'm going to take you downstairs real quick and show you all the false work. Okay, guys. I just wanted to show you real quick kind of the amount of false work that takes place. All these two by fours are obviously reusable, um, but we have to, I mean, this is labor to get this up. It took about, um, I think two of my guys, it took them most of a day to get all this up. Then the light deck itself went up in an hour or two, real easy. But um, if you look up here, you can see what it looks like from underneath. It's got a metal stud effectively, but it's uh, performing the duties of a ceiling joist for screwing sheetrock to um, every 16 inches embedded in that foam. Like I said, the newer, the, the Amdex and the Aquatix, you actually set the foam blocks on, you know, metal or wood joists and uh, you get a longer span that way. But this system comes all integrated. I would say this one installs faster, but there's benefits to the other ones as far as shipping and also just the modular nature of installation. But um, I'm gonna show you some on the pour today, real quick. Okay guys, back over here this morning. Everything is all done. The pour went great. I don't show a lot of the pour with when the Amish guys are on site because uh, like I said, they, they're a little camera shy. I try to be respectful of that. But I just kind of want to go over a couple of the 
you know, the benefits to this. One, the concrete roof, concrete structure, basically fireproof. You know, if you're living in a place where wildfires are a concern, they're not really in Missouri, but where I'm going in Angel Fire, they absolutely are. So that's why I'm really looking forward to doing this method. Um, a lot of what we see people using light deck for is like on top of a garage when you got a second story that feeds out onto it because it makes a cool patio area. Um, and then if you want the concrete finish to be your patio, you have to do something to waterproof it because if you ever get a crack in this or anything, you know, it's going to bleed down into your sheetrock or whatever. So there's two to three ways of, you know, skinning that cat, so to speak. The first one, the one that you'll see them uh, kind of promoting on like the websites, light deck and stuff like that is they'll run a layer of TPO on top. They'll pour the beams first, as you saw from before. The, you know, everything is monolithically poured, but you can just pour the beams. Then you got a flat surface, foam, then a concrete beam, then foam, then, and it's in a plane. And you roll out TPO, you weld it, you basically make a roof. Then you pour the slab on top of it. That does a couple of things, though. It, it reduces your span because this is no longer monolithic. Technically, you're decoupled the slab from the beams. So both of them are having to kind of independently do their work which is not as strong. So maybe you take something that could span 30 feet down to 18 or something. So you might have to have some steel, whatever. So I don't love that for that reason. And even though you're encapsulated and it probably does last a long, long time, TPO is a really cool product, but it doesn't last forever. No, and no rubber finish will. So I don't like not being able to get to it. You're encapsulating it in, inside the middle of the thing. So that's not my favorite method. Um, the Favorite method I have would be to, and what we're doing here, we, we do have to frame a soffit, like an overhang on this entire building because we were going to do it all with light deck. Uh, the homeowner, after we had the stuff here, decided to make the just a little bigger, the way his cars are going to fit in here and stuff. So when we did, the overhang got small, so we just, you know, nixed it. And now um, we're going to have to frame that, and we'll deck that a little bit. It'll be a little overhang on there, and then we will TPO the entire roof just as uh, our waterproofing. Not that this isn't pretty much waterproof right now, but just as time goes on, if we go to crack or anything like that. Now picture you got a flat roof that's a patio that you want to do that to. Um, I'll show you a picture of the patio that I, that I did at the big house, and that's a TPO roof with bison pedestals. I think it's the coolest, most modern thing. I could make a level deck on this sloped roof if I wanted to with bisons. You, you take the pedestals and you use the 2CM porcelain that you can get anywhere from Menards to any of your nice tile shops. And that those are tensely strong enough that you just support the corners with the bison pedestals um, on the TPO. So And, and the, the, they got a little spacer built in and that keeps them all like a quarter inch space. And when it rains, the rain just runs between the tile down onto the TPO and you know goes wherever it's supposed to go, whether it's an internal drain or a gutter, whatever. So that's my favorite thing, because you end up with a level deck. You can have all these slopes in your ceiling or your, your roof to make water go where it's supposed to, but then still have a level deck. You see it a lot of times um, in, in modern you know, high-rise decks and bars that are on rooftops and stuff, because it's a way to provide a flat surface on a sloped roof. Um, and that is probably one of the more costly ways. Those bison pedestals are at least $10 a piece, and then the tile's probably $5 a square foot. But if you're gonna have this rooftop deck area, that's what we're doing in Angel Fire. Um, a, on a deck above the garage and I think it's the coolest look. I know some guys will just throw Zypex in it and you know uh, it's pretty much waterproof but I just worry about what might happen down the road and the other option of putting the membrane in the floor while it may work I just I, I, it, I see a problem from a couple perspectives personally I like to just uh, factor in you're already spending the money to do this best practice here you know spend the money on the uh, pavers and the bisons and uh, that's the way I would go. But anyway, um, I just kind of wanted to show you the, uh, the, the final on this. And um, I said I love the products that are out there for concrete floors and concrete roofs. I think they are the coming thing. Um, you know, obviously, ICF Magazine, everybody else agrees on, on, nicer, on nicer projects. We're building buildings that can last 500 years doing it this way. So um, like I said, we got some really cool stuff coming up with training and a bunch of jobs like this one that will be wrapping up in the fall here. I can show you guys a lot more content and uh, really looking forward to it. I think two weeks I'll have my plans on Angel Fire and I'll have a whole video just about how cool that project's going to be. I'll see you guys next week.